All right. Brad. Yes. Hum that bar again. Welcome to the family. Now, has anybody told Arlene that we're a family? No one yet. No, no one yet. I mean, but yeah. I know we're a family. Yeah. <laughs> we are a family. Wilma. And we're not and we're not just a Filipino family, we're an international family. <laughs> <laughs> Wilma, what does that mean? If uh, we are family, if you if you are weak, lean on somebody, and if you are strong, help somebody. Is it? Well, you had you have your wait a minute. Where's your sidekick today? Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. How come, how come she's Call not a on? friend, Mom Cora. How come Vanessa's not on? Hey, I'm okay. here. Okay. All right. Uh, prayer request. Uh, we'll get back to you in a second, Arlene. Wilma, do you have a prayer request today? Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving for all my, the negative, uh, negative results of my laboratory. I didn't even know you were having a laboratory test. Uh, yeah, if I was told to have this ECG and uh, to the echocardiogram, okay. and it's all negative, sir. It's, it's all negative. Fine. That's a blessing. Yes, sir. Yay. Yes, sir. Nalin. Uh, Thanksgiving also, sir, and good health Thanksgiving for everyone. For I'm okay now, sir. Okay, good. Vanessa. Sir, continuously good health and happiness. Okay, very good. Larissa. Uh, sir, uh, for everyone's safety and happiness. Nothing going on? Nothing special? No thank yous to God? No, I need God. We're needing some things. <laughs> Uh, thanksgiving also for the blessing and for the good health that he has given to us. Okay. Anna? Yes, sir. Um, continuous blessing for everyone and happiness. Anything in specific, Anna? Um, every aspect of happiness in life. That's not specific, Anna. Any, is there anything going on? Anything we need to be thankful for? If no, it's okay. Mm, nothing real specific. Sir. Okay. Well, thank you for God's blessings in our life. Fred. Yes. Um, there's a sister uh, named Phyllis who has some health challenges. Um, pray for her, you know, just openness to some helpful treatment that I can provide for her and uh, for her husband to be around so I can <laughs> share it with her. Okay, very good. Cora. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, su successful surgery in the people, uh, the people of Taiwan on their earthquake. And tsunami. And so there's no tsunami, it's just earthquake right now. Okay. Arlene. Yes, sir. Prayer request this morning. Uh, I I want to be thankful because of all the struggles in my life these past years. I still strong because God don't leave me. Actually, I'm so thankful because I'm here again with you. Okay. 
We're glad you're part of our family, okay? All right, Fred, you got an opening prayer for us, please? Yes. Uh, Lord, we come before you just giving you thanks for allowing us to uh, see this day, to see this hour, to be blessed to wake up on this side of the earth, of the grass as they stay to uh, not only come together to learn more of your word, to but to learn more about each other. And we want to, we have many who just want to give you praise and thanks for the good health, such as with uh, Sister Wilma, for her test coming up positive and also for Nalin. The thankful and want to give you praise and, and honor and glory for uh, working, uh, design, uh, designing their body the way you did so that way they can, at this stage in their life, can have health, healthy, good health and pass good tests. Um, Vanessa and Larissa also asked for thanks for just the good health and, and the blessings in their life. Lord, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good to recognize the good things that, that we are appreciative and uh, thankful and honor you with those prayers as well. And thank you for placing that on their heart. Uh, Cora asked for prayers for Taiwan, those in Taiwan who uh, suffered uh, the earthquake. Pray, Lord, for any uh, restoration of lives that they can be found and that you may, um, and, and those who are not able to be uh, saved, that you lay them to rest and pray, Lord, that they had a knowledge of you, Lord, because we never know uh, a what can, tomorrow's not promised to anyone, and that's why we want to uh, be ready, whether it's an earthquake or a car accident or just uh, our heart failing, we want to be prepared to glorify you, to uh, see you uh, uh, in the afterlife. And we also ask, and she asked for prayers for safe, uh, for surgery, for uh, earnest. We pray for uh, all may go smooth with that and with the doctors. May you guide their minds and their hearts, as we know that uh, even though the, as wise as they may be, they they are fallible or they, they do make mistakes. And we want you, them to be a uh, clarity of mind and all things to work out with insurance and, and bills as well, that you can, you can be glorified. And that is something that we also can uh, honor you with praise and thanks. Uh, Arlene asked for prayers for, she's just thankful for the struggles uh, in her life, Lord. And, and it's what a blessing to be mindful of the purpose of struggles in our lives. Oftentimes we may, uh, we, you know, look down on it or, or be depressed, but we know that the struggles that we have are there to keep us aware of your need and your presence in our life and, and uh, help us to, to draw closer to you, Lord. Uh, and she's thankful for even being here and we, we, and we're thankful for that she's here so that way we can, another soul can hear your message, hear the life-saving message of the gospel, which helps us to uh, be prepared for the afterlife and be prepared for not what may come, but what's gonna come. Uh, none of us get out of this alive and we want to do our best to be prepared for that day and time as we uh, continue to patiently uh, wait for that day and and at the same time strive to be a a mouthpiece for for jesus christ in jesus we pray amen. amen okay good morning everyone as we continue our study of the book of genesis uh somebody read for me genesis 1 1 please in the beginning there you go. That's all I that's all I was looking for. Good job, sweetheart. In the, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So what does it say? In the beginning, right? When it first started, God created, but 
in the beginning, God. Where's Julian? To go along with this, grab 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, Wilma. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. The Apostle Peter in First Peter chapter 3, verse 15, is calling on God's people to stand up and stand out. Be prepared to let people know not only what you believe, but why you believe it. We are living in a time and a society that is becoming, becoming more and more atheistic in their belief system. That requires an effort on our part that we be trained, that we be equipped to deal not only with their arguments, but with their ridicule. While the Bible may call such disbelievers fools, and it does, it's probably not appropriate for us to do so. Rather, we need to find ways to enlighten them, to challenge them in their thought process, to encourage them to search diligently for the right answers. But in order to do that, we need to confirm our own belief in the Bible, our own belief in the Bible as the inspired word of God. And then we need to live consistent with its teaching. And finally, we need to be able to discuss intelligently and kindly with those who claim to be disbelievers. To what does in the beginning have reference? A lot of people think that it has reference to the beginning of time and history. Truth is, time and history did not exist before the beginning. They have a beginning, and everything that has a beginning will have an ending. The Apostle John uses this expression somebody give me john hold on let me tell you who it's going to be john chapter one verse one vanessa john chapter one verse one says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god now that's actually something that's come up in a conversation recently. You know what? Uh, that's verse one. Give me verse two, Larissa. He was in the beginning with God. Verse three, Anna. And verse three says... And verse 3 says, All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Verse 4, Fred. And, and God saw that, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. No, that's Genesis chapter one? Yes. We're in John chapter one, Fred. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Well, it's good that you knew that it was Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> it shows you're a Bible student. I was testing you. I was testing you. Okay. All right, John 4. In him was life, and the, and the life was the light of men. Okay. In him was the light, and it was the light of men. Um, what we see here, I'm going to ask a question and then pass it around. I'm going to, then I'm going to go back to the explanation. When did Jesus Christ become the son of God? Cora? Um, I'm not, I, 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 I know the answer, but as what I've learned, when you say the son of God, meaning um, God and son are, I mean, what is that? Uh, the son of God is the son, not God, Jesus as his son, but God and Jesus are son in nature. Okay, so meaning the beginning is he became the son from the from the it's 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 like there's no beginning and there's no end so i don't think there is a beginning that um, jesus was the son of god Very good. so there's no beginning good answer uh what the greek actually means here when it says son of god is it's uh if you go back and do a word study you will find that it means in the essence of jesus christ has always been and always will be in the essence of God or deity. When did Jesus Christ become the son of man, Nalin? Oh, when did Jesus become son of man? Yes. Uh, the time that he was born, sir? Because he's uh, he was made from the spirit. He's mm -hmm. always been the son of God. He's always he is what there's a big fancy English word. Uh, Julie's not there, so mm -hmm. Vanessa, give me a Google on the word pre-existent. P r e e x i s t a n t. System. Tell us what it means, please. Sir, existing at or from an earlier time. Existing. Jesus Christ was pre existent to the world. He's always been the Son of God, meaning of divine nature and Nalin, you were correct he became the son of man when he was born into an earthly body now let's get back on the book of genesis before there were men before there were animals before there was plant life before there were stars or planets in the air there was someone but there was nothing. God's creation had a beginning and it will have an ending. Chorus, Second uh, Peter chapter three, verse 10, please. Second Peter chapter three, verse. Verse 10. You got it, Arlene. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But on the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heaven will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done. It will be laid here. 
laid bare. Now, as I've already said, God has always, the earth is coming to an end. The planets are all coming to an end. God has always existed. He is eternal. He is everlasting. He has no beginning nor no ending. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3. Nalim. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3. He is yes. without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he continues a priest forever. Who is he referring to in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3, Nalin? Jesus Christ. Very good. Marvin, give us Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, please. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14 says, How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? There's a command there. What is the command that you're reading in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14, Marvin? Uh, is it baptism? No, read the, read the verse and take it straight out of the verse. Okay. How, much will, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify? Okay, it's here. Purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Purify what, our conscience. Right. Live in a way that is worthy of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 20, Arlene. Verse 20. Unmute, please, Arlene. Somebody help her. Mm. How chapter one verse, verse twenty Romans chapter one verse twenty for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Who's without excuse? If we read the context there, sinners are without excuse. We are to live in such a way as to be worthy of the price that was paid. We are to set an example to those that are around us. Romans chapter 16, verse 26, please, Wilma. 16, 26. Romans chapter 16, verse 26. But has now been disclosed that through the prophetic writings have been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. Now, do you notice that if you have faith, what do you do? You obey. 
you obey. You know what? There's another verse that goes with that. Anybody know it right off? Vanessa. Mark 16, 16. Close. That's close. Vanessa. Sir. How about reading for us John chapter 3, verse 36? John chapter 3. So whoever believes in the Son is eternal, but the one who rejects the Son. John chapter 3, verse 36. 36. 36. 36. Whoever, believes. whoever believes in Son of has eternal life, whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So what is it telling us in John chapter 3, verse 36? In Romans chapter 16. We have 26. to obey, sir. We have to obey. So this and idea that we can claim to have faith and then live any way we want to, I'm sorry, but that's just unscriptural. It's just not there. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13, Larissa. <laughs> Isaiah verse 43, uh, chapter 43 verse 13. Ayun. Also henceforth I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. I work and who can turn it back. There is none who can deliver us from God. God created time. Yet time is not really a factor with God. Second Peter chapter three, verse eight, Anna. Second Peter Uh, sir, it's Second Peter chapter three verse eight. Is that correct? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Is everybody there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Second Peter chapter three verse eight says, "But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day." So. What it says is God is, operates outside of time. He is not limited by time or space. He is everywhere and he is present always. Psalm 139, verse seven. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 7. Fred, you're up. Before I go from my spirit. Psalm 139, verse 7. Psalms 139. Where can I flee from your presence? Okay. Psalms 139, verse 7 reads, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee? 
from your presence. Verse 8, Corey. Psalm 138, uh, verse... Verse 8. Uh, same, Psalm 139, verse 8, it says, If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the death, you are there. Verse 9, please, Malin. Psalm 139, verse 9. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Marvin, verse 10, please. Verse 10 says, Even though your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. So where is even there referring to, Marvin? Everywhere. 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 We have a word, big fancy English word, that is omnipresent, which means present everywhere. From the depths of the ocean to the tops of the mountain to outer space. God is there. Jeremiah 23, 23. Arlene. Jeremiah. A chapter. Jeremiah verse 23. Chapter 23, verse 23. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? I, God is telling us here that he is always where? At hand. That means that he is close to us. Where are you? Well, most of you are in the Philippines. Where am I? I am not. However, God is near all of us. Verse 24, Nalin. Uh, Wilma, sorry. Verse 24, Jeremiah 23, verse 24. Can, I, can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord. Do I not feel heaven and earth, declares the Lord. So one thing we need to bear in mind is God is not a man. He's not limited like man. He's not even a superman. Rather, he is all-powerful. His power is limitless. Uh, numbers 23 and 19. Vanessa? Yeah. Genesis, Exodus, Exodus Numbers. Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? So it's there. Whatever God has told us is what he is going to do. He is not a man. He does not change his mind. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, Larissa.
Matthew 16, ah, 16, 17. And Jesus answered him. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So, what did it reveal to Simon Barjona or Simon Peter? Give us verse 16 to go with that, Anna. And verse 16 says, Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We need to each keep that in our mind. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Fred? Romans 1, verse 20. I thought we read that already before, right? We probably did. We're proving the same point or a similar mm -hmm. point. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They are without excuse. His power is there for us to see, if we want to see it. Uh, There's a gentleman by the name of Pascal, P-A-S-C-A-L, and he is a scientist who developed theories of hydraulics that are still in use today, 400 years after he died. Uh, Wilma, you're pretty smart, right? Sure. You're pretty smart, right? <laughs> Say yes, of course. Yes, yes of, of course. course. Fred, you're pretty smart, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. Depends on, depends on the, the, you, when you, the day uh, you ask my wife. <laughs> okay. Cora, you're pretty smart, right? Yeah, I got it from you. I keep on rubbing it. <laughs> rub, rub, rub. I want you to think about what I'm getting ready to say. All of us may be pretty smart. Is anybody going to know our name 400 years after we're dead? No. No. So Hopefully my family, some someone in my family, I don't know, <laughs> but probably not. Probably not. Um, we're not going to leave a mark on the world like Pascal did. And he made a statement, which is where I'm headed with this. That statement was, in matters of faith, there is enough light for those who want to see. And there is enough shadow for those who are of a contrary mind. Fred, when you're doing evangelism, if somebody's decided they just don't want to see it, will they see it? Yeah, because I take the book and then I beat it over their head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I let them go. They, if, they, if they refuse to see, they just won't see. No, but if you want to see, it's there for it. And that's what Pascal's point was. It's there. God is a spirit. And that's where we're going to end. John chapter 4, verse 23, Cora, and 24, Nalim. John. John chapter 4, 
verse 23 and 24. John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. 23 yeah, the time. Verse, go ahead. I'm sorry. Verse 23, pass to Nalin for 24. Oh, I'm see. I'm sorry. Okay, 23. Yeah, the time is coming and has and, and now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in spirit, for they are kind of worshipers the Father seek. Okay. Verse 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God cannot be seen by man. But to reject God simply because we cannot see him would be very inconsistent of us. Anna. Yes, sir. Does your child love you? Come again, sir. Does your child love you? Yes, sir. I think so. Can you show it to me? Mm, How much does uh, it weigh? For example, sir, when we had a potluck here, he, she's, she saw a lechon manok. And yeah. she knows that leg part is my favorite. She gave it to me. Okay. Can you make, how much does that love weigh? Mm, maybe 80%. No. If I put uh, it on a scale, how many kilos is it? Uh, kilos. Uh, maybe 800 grams. You can't <laughs> measure it. <laughs> how are you going to weigh love? How much uh, space does it hold? Uh, it, you can't no measurement. It. You five, can't measure what it. Are, what are our five senses, somebody? Five. Sense of Come on, sense of hearing. Touch. Okay. Come on, Marvin. Sight, smell, uh, sight, smell, hearing, taste, touch. Okay. Can you measure love with any of those? No. Love is immeasurable. But we all know that it exists, right? Yes. God exists, but you can't measure him. Yes. Um, it's like air. Uh, we, uh, we can feel it, but we can't see it. Very good. Okay, everybody. It was a beautiful class today.